It's a Father's Day, and we're excited you're here. If you need sermon notes, wave at me. Ushers uh, will pass those out. Maybe you want to keep up. You know, uh, Jesus brought a new revelation when he came. He taught that God, the Almighty God, was Father. You know, in the Old Testament, God had many names, El Shaddai, Jehovah Rapha, uh, Jehovah Shalom. He had all kinds of names, and they meant something, and they were covenant names, and they're powerful names. But when Jesus came, he said, God is Father. And it upset the religious teachers because that made him equal with God. But guess what? He said for you to call God your Father. When he taught the disciples how to pray, he said, Our Father. This is how you pray. Say, Our Father. Everybody say, Our Father. Now, you know what? Your earthly father, your earthly dad may stink, may not have been very good. Doesn't matter. You're, you have a heavenly father who sent his son, Jesus, and when you receive him, he becomes your brother. You're in the family, and God becomes your father. That's good news. And so I, I'm not going to concentrate on that. I'm going to concentrate on you spending time with the father. And we're going to talk about every day with the father and we're going to look at some things, and, and as you know, uh, as we dig into this, I'm going at a little bit of a different area, but if, if you look in Luke 15, 31, and we're just going to, before we go there, this is the story of the prodigal son, the, the, the fast-living son, blew all his money. Y'all know, know the prodigal son? But what you miss in the story is the older brother who stayed home, Okay? And he got mad because the father took the prodigal back. Now I'm talking to, this is, this is talking to church people. Maybe you're a prodigal in here and you're so thankful God has taken you back. And you know what? I'm thankful he's taking you back. But maybe you, you got saved and you never stepped away from God. Are you the older brother who, who lived in the house but never had conversations with his dad? Huh? When they did the party for the prodigal, he wouldn't even go in there. He's so mad at his dad. And he's like, you've never given me a goat to kill and have a party for my friends. You never. And this is the dad's response. And he said to him, son, you are always with me and all that I have is yours. You need to memorize this scripture because God is telling every one of us, you're always with me, and I'm always with you, and everything I have is yours. But we act like the son, and God didn't bless me like he's blessing them. I don't have a nice house like they do, and you get into that judging stuff, and you're going to the wrong person. You're going to yourself. When it's up here, you're going to yourself, and you're comparing yourself. When we need to go to the Father. And the last Sunday we talked about there's more. There's always more in God. And God wants you. He said, I'll withhold no good thing from you. Well, then how come I don't have, there's places in my life maybe I don't have good things. I need to get in line with God. And that might hurt a little bit. Because I'm a little bit selfish. Or a little bit, I don't, you know, you have not because you ask not. You know, are you asking or are you complaining? Okay. All right. And so we're going to dig into this. And uh, in Exodus 25, 22, and says, uh, when they built the tower, God said, I'm going to meet you. God has always wanted to meet with you. The Father always wants to meet with you. He don't want you to, he didn't want to go to the priest. You remember when Moses went up and got the Ten Commandments on the, Moses, you know, go back, way back, Cecil B. DeMille. He wanted everybody to come up on the mountain, and they're like, oh, are oh, you going up there? A lot of people are afraid of God. Don't be afraid of God. He's not, and we're going we're gonna to make some fun of some stuff today and have a little fun with this, but look what he says. There I'll meet you, and I will speak with you uh, from above the mercy seat and between the two cherubim, which are on the ark of the testimony about everything which I will give you in the commandment to the children of Israel. God wants to speak to you. And God wants you to speak to him. Okay? So we're going to talk about visiting the Father, calling the Father, talking to the Father. And uh, there's four myths. 
we're going to dive into some fun stuff about, you know, people have a, a wrong conception about having, spending quality time with God. And so if you look at your sheet, number one is your time with God must be between 4 a.m. and 6 a.m. And no, not me anyway. That may be for you, glory to God, but no, don't wake me up. You know, and, and you, know, you know, when somebody says, well, I got up at 4.30, I get up at 4.30 every morning. You must not have kids or a job. And you know, one of my favorite, favorite preachers, his quality time was God was from midnight to one because he was a night owl. He liked to stay up late. God made you, your personality, your time to sleep, your time to get up. Ah, uh, yeah, we need a quiet time with God. We need to read our Bible. We need to write some things down and we need to praise him, okay? That's where we're going. But, but, it's on your time is what I'm trying to tell you. It, it, you know, it don't have to be at four in the morning. You know, God will tell you, go back to bed and get some sleep. You're not, you can't hear me anyway. Y'all. <laughs> yeah, you know, so, so make it, it's your time with the Father. Oh, but Lord, can you meet me? Yes, he can meet you. Okay, number two. Number two, your time must be at least an hour. Oh, mercy. I, I'm, I'm, I'm older, okay? I'm in the 80s, and they had, can you tarry, you know? And can you tarry an hour? And like, you, whew, man, I've been praying. It's only been 10 minutes. I got four. I, listen, it ain't going to have to be an hour. If you forget the time, you know, God, God will visit you, and it may take five minutes, but you may end up being an hour. But don't be on somebody else's clock. It's your clock and God's clock. Okay? God's fun. Religion's not. And so God is fun. And, and, then, and then number three, you must journal. And it must sound like the King James Bible. Thou us, Lord, us, know us, that I need us, the... Baloney. God, God speaks Southwest Virginia. He speaks Louisiana. He speaks Russian. He speaks Ukrainian. He speaks Japanese. God speaks your language, and you need to write it down. You, get, you either have your phone with you. You need to have something to be able to take some notes because God's going to speak to you. And you don't. You know what? It, God has spoke to me like, what was that? I got to write it down. And sometimes, you know, maybe you're like my boss when I worked for Motorola. We would have these meetings, you know, continuing education, and you had this big card with your name on it, and it's folded over, and on the back of his card, this is what some, some people need to journal. Be nice. <laughs> the Lord may tell you, be nice today, because anybody ever woke up on the wrong side of the bed? You know, some, maybe you get somebody to saw your horns off before you leave out the house for the day. <laughs> you need to change your attitude, you know, an attitude check, and God will give you an attitude check. And so my boss was finished that story. My boss wrote, be nice. And the teacher coming around and he had, this radio was his baby. We were selling radios and he saw it back, be nice. He goes, huh, I'm going to be nice. He goes, no, no, that's not for you. That's for me. And before the end of the day, he, he, he that guy out up and down. Oh my goodness. He did. He went, he, you know, at least on told him that was a piece of junk. And why are you trying to get us to sell that? And God was almost crying, but he, you know, he was, the guy asked, and he told him, be careful who, what you ask the people, right? But God's not that way. God always wakes up in a good mood. Get out of the Old Testament. We're in grace and mercy now. Jesus has come, and you've been washed in the blood. We sang about it, okay? Number four, and it's going back to time, your time with God must be at the same time every day. If it's going to be at eight, it's got to be at eight. Well, what if your wife's having a baby at eight o'clock? What if they call you in from work and say, we need you to go to Roanoke today, and you're on the road at 8 o'clock? It's okay. God's not going to say, well, this is, the, this is the 53rd time this year you've missed 8 o'clock. He is not that way. But you know what? I've had some great times with God in the car driving to Roanoke or driving somewhere and just spend the time. I mean, back, I don't know what an 8-track is. I had cassettes. I had CDs, and I had somebody preaching to me, somebody singing to me, and having a worship service or whatever in the car with God, okay? 
But you do need to learn to set some time and get into the Word. And it doesn't matter if the uh, kids, work, whatever, take your break. Eat your sandwich, reading the Word, and just talking to the Father. Getting where you can, and getting where you can hear. So, so we'll dig into this. So, so four guidelines to help you. These are four helps when you want to spend time with God, okay? We get a little bit serious, more serious. And uh, we don't want to be that, pro- the, not the, the son who doesn't talk to the father. We want to talk to the father. So number one, quiet your mind. It got quiet in here. But when you separate yourself to talk to God, your mind will begin to run 90 miles an hour. I tell the story, this one pastor I heard was preaching on being, you know, I started praying and, and I, it just came to me. Are a cow's horns on the outside of his ears or the inside? He said, I had to get up from praying and go out and look at the cows. That's how your mind will just eat you up because your mind wants to be in control. I don't know. We, I, maybe I should have preached on it, but remember, your body is your slave, your mind is your servant, and your spirit is king. And you got to make your mind so you, and, and here's something that'll help. If you got something, write down. Write down, well, you need to call Aunt Susie. You need to get some butter. You need to write it down and say, now shut up. <laughs> Talking to yourself. Because your mind will go, hey, 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 hey. And I'm, well, I'm trying to talk to God here. Hey, 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 you need to get this. You need to get milk. Uh, you're, gonna, you're almost out of gas. Shh. You got to steal your mind. And I'm I'm not the only one. I know y'all sitting there like, no, not me, Pastor. (laughs) But your mind will run wild. Uh, uh, Psalm 62, 1, it says, Truly my soul silently waits for God. From him comes my salvation or my shalom, my peace, or or everything that I need in life. In the same chapter, uh, Psalm 62, 5 says, My soul waits silently for God alone, for my expectation is from him. So that's what prayer is about or spending time that you're going to the Father, first of all. Okay? We're going to go and we're going we're to sit down with the Father. We're going to meet with Him and we're going to get our minds still. And it may take you a couple of minutes to get your mind still. And if you've been praying a long time, you'll go down that old, that old goat path, I'm going to call it. Well, Lord, I'll just come to you and I'll just thank you. And you're just going through the same old thing instead of just getting still first. All right, Lord, it's me and you today. These next 15, 20 minutes, these next 30 minutes, whatever it's going to be, I got at least an hour. I'm going to, I'm going to, however long it takes. So number two is we got to focus our mind. And I'm going to help you. How do you focus it? You got to get it still. Now we want to focus it. One of the greatest ways to focus your mind on God is to worship. And and, I'm, I'm, let's back up. Let's praise him. Thanksgiving. You know, Thanksgiving, when you wake up in that bad mood and when you wake up on the wrong side of the bed and you need those horns sawed off, you need to get in some Thanksgiving where you've been, what God has done for you and who the Father is and, and, and recognize, you know what? The God of the universe sent His Son so He could be my Father and I could receive His Son and I could have the, the power of the Holy Spirit living on the inside of me. Man, I serve the... The, a father who made and created the universe. I'm in his family. He created me for fellowship. Not somebody to whip up on and like, you old dog, I told you I didn't make you like that, and there you are. God doesn't do that. God's not in the condemnation. Miss Shirley gave the word. God's not in the condemnation business. He's in the business of restoration, restoring, reconciliation, bringing us closer Oh, he's, that's our focus. So singing, praise, and worship, thanksgiving. Psalms 100, <clears throat> big long chapters, one through five. Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. A gladness? Well, here we got to go to church. Come on, that's not gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Well, I can't sing. God doesn't care. God knows you can't sing. My, my pastor in Louisiana, oh, my goodness. You come into church, he'd be singing and like, let me just get back out of here. It wasn't that good. But it, God loved it. God loved it. God loves your singing. 
And God wants you to sing. Know that the Lord, He is God, and that He has made us, and not we ourselves. We are His people, people the sheep of His pasture. We'll remind you this. We're His sheep. Say, I'm a sheep. Go, bah. It's all right. It's all right. There's a purpose to be in sheep. We'll get into that in just a minute. And so enter his gates with thanksgiving. We thank you, Lord. Hey, just want to thank you for my wife, my family. I want to thank you for my job. I want to thank you for life. I want to thank you for Jesus. Into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. There are times to worship. But you know, when you want to focus your mind and just get on track, just come on, get, come in with some thanksgiving and come in with some praise. Verse 5 will the last verse, for the Lord is good, and his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. Well, it was better back in the 60s. It was better back in the 20s. No, a lot. This generation is blessed. This generation is blessed. We're blessed. God put us here in this season and this time, and, and his truth and his mercy and his grace is enduring right now. Right now. I know it looks ugly out there, but in here it looks doggone good. Come on, you got the God of the universe on your side. He's your father. He's your father and you're his child. And so we got to change, change our mind and, and focus our mind. W what song do you want to start off singing? How about the one you wake up with? Anybody other than me ever wake up with a song? You know, I knew I was going to be preaching this, but you know what song's just been busting in my mind? Uh, it's an old hymn. And as a kid, I didn't understand what in the world we were singing. Nobody ever stopped and explains the good hymns to me. You know, power in the blood, washed in the blood. But, but, and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own. Come on, that, that is a, that's why we're spending time with the Father. Spending time with the Father. Come on. Uh, he's gonna, he wants to walk with you, talk with you. And, and you know, we, we have the concept that we're supposed to be on our knees somewhere. Man, you can walk through the woods and have a conversation with God. Huh? You can go to a garden, you can drive, you can wash dishes and have a conversation with God. He's right there with you. Oh, yeah, there's something to having that special place, but you know what? God's with you. Go have some time with him. Go have some fun with him. Go ride a bicycle with him. Okay. So, so let his presence fill you. We stilled our mind. We're focusing on God now. Let's go to number three. How about pray what's on your mind? Not, not about the cows if the horns on the inside of the ears. But how about God bring somebody to you to pray? How about your kids? You know, how, how many, I mean, I'm not going to ask for a raise of hand. At certain points in life, people become a burden. They become a burden. Your kids are a burden. Your, your parents are a burden, and you need to pray for them, or your brother, or your sister, and you need to pray for them. And, and God will bring them to your remembrance while you're in prayer time or while you're just walking and talking to Him, and you've been worshiping to Him, and God will, God will bring somebody to your heart. And you're supposed to pray over them and release them, not carry them. My brother's a big boy. I can't carry him anymore. I'm not supposed to carry him. Remember, we're sheep. There's no such thing as pack sheep. There's pack mules. You're not a pack mule. We carry stuff that we're not supposed to carry. And if you've been carrying something, before you even sit down, steal your mind, write that down. We're praying about that today. I'm going to put it on the altar, and I'm going to let it go. Because you are not a pack sheep. Sheep don't carry stuff, but their own wool. And Jesus called you to be his sheep, and he said, you know my voice, but quit carrying things that don't belong to you. Can I have an amen? Because most of y'all in here, like me, we carry stuff we're not supposed to. Paul said, the daily care of the church, wearing me out. Paul, the apostle Paul, the daily care of the church will wear you out. It wears me out. I have to cast it over on the Lord. We have to cast things over on God. We have to cast our, uh, if you're disgruntled at work, quit griping about it and pray about it. 
I hate my boss. And you know, he got a brand new haircut and, you know, an old song. Take this job and do something with it. So, <laughs> But that's griping. Instead of praying. Instead of saying, God, do I need to get a job? God, do I need to change? Do I need to change? You know, I, 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 I was at work one time and we were working with this big corporation and this guy, they said he was a genius. Uh, he was a sport brat. Uh, he was probably about 32. He was a corporate VP and he would come up and just start cussing people out because he didn't think it was right because he's the smartest man on the job side or the smartest man in the boardroom. And so he commenced to cussing us out and we got back in the car and, you know, you wanted to just walk off and, 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 and let, you know, let him come back or because uh, we, we were in a good place. And so my boss, the owner of the company, my boss, we, we all get cussed out, especially me. And they go, well, I don't know if you're going to be able to handle it. I said, I, I'm going to take it to the bank is what I'm going to do because this is mine. And you know what? I'm not going to let him steal this job because me and the Lord are going to work this out. And I said, I'm taking it to the bank. And I'm going to make money off of this job. And so this guy, I mean, you know, you, you, you know how redneck mountain people are. There was two boys down in a pit, and he cussed them out. They were electricians. They started coming up the ladder. The guys with him had to drag him off the property because they was fixing to take care of him, you know. <laughs> you got to get out of here. You got to quit doing that. Uh, people, people, people need to be called, you know, that's, that's the flesh. That is a child grown up and still a child thinking they're all that. I don't want to get off on that because you know what? You got to ask God, do I need to change? Am I going to let that affect me? Am I going to walk away from, you know, from this? That man was just in there for uh, three weeks or whatever, and then he was gone. I took care of that company, and he wasn't going to affect me or me walk away or get in my flesh and me walk away from something that was a blessing to me. You got to recognize that jobs are a blessing. And people can't keep you from walking in the, the blessing. I mean, people will cuss you out. People will do those things. You know what? That's not me. <laughs> My kids would come in from school. You don't know what they call me, a stupid head. I said, are you? No, I'm not. I said, why are you crying? You're not. <laughs> you know, don't take that gift. I don't get off on that. If somebody cusses you out, it doesn't belong to you. You know what? If you don't take the gift, you, where does it go? It goes back. This is what the Bible says about a curse. If somebody tries to put a curse on you, child of God, it's all right. It's got to go back to them. That's not your curse. You're blessed. Christ has redeemed you from the curse. We are mine. We got to change our thinking. We're going to let things go. We're not, that's not mine to take. I'm giving that back. And I'm not going to let it affect me. And it's, oh yeah, it's tough. Your flesh wants to rise up, doesn't it? Nobody's looking. I'll slap him real quick and only me and God will know. You can't do that. You can't do that. You have got to maintain your walk with God and you got to learn how to cast your cares over on the Lord. Let's read it. Let's read that scripture. 1 Peter 5, 6 through 8. It says, therefore, humble yourselves. Your flesh is what's got to be humbled. Humble yourselves before the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. God's going to exalt you in due time if you stay humble with him. Look at the next verse. Casting all your care on upon him for he cares for you. But I heard Fred Price say the lady came to him. She goes, little petite lady, my husband's 300 pounds. How, how can I cast him over on the Lord? He said, you write down everything that, that you don't want or that he's doing wrong, you wad it up and you cast it in the trash can, now you write down every blessing that you call him to be and you stand and hold to that. Cast that care, take the blessing. So cast your care upon the Lord for he cares for you. Isn't that good? So we're not packed sheep, we're going to lay it at the feet of Jesus and we're going to leave it. How do we know we transferred it? Well, I prayed, and, and, and I asked God to take it. But how many of you know that we can do this? Go right back and pick it up. Huh? You know, Lord, what, what do I need to do? Lord, what do I need to do? 
What do I need to do? What do I need to do? What do you think I need to do? What do you think I need to do? You're in trouble now. Come on, you ask one godly person and you, you, you know, get prayer and cast it on the, on the Lord, and now we're going to wait, and God's going to take care of it. And how do you know? Because the burden's lifted or peace has come. Peace, peace, peace. We talked about that last week. You need to go back and listen to that. It's more than just peace, man. It's more than world peace, you know? It's, it's the peace, the shalom of God. It's your salvation. And let God be real in your life. And let God consume you. And you know that, you know what? I've, I've, God's got that. And oh, the devil's going to come show it to you again. Oh, but look. Uh-uh. God's got it. God's going to take care of it. Y'all ready? Y'all got it? So we're looking for peace and when we pray. Number four, renew your mind. <clears throat> how, how do we renew our mind? With the Bible, with the Word of God, God's Word. You know, it's good to read through the Bible, you know, once a year. If you do that, I do that. It's awesome. And I love the stories in the Old Testament, and I love the parallel of things uh, in the Word. But come on, how about God asking God for something? Asking God for a word, asking God for a scripture, and just kind of wait. And if he says peace, and then you go, in this world, you'll have trouble. You'll have tribulation. But be of good cheer, I've overcome the world. And, I'm, and he says, I'll give you peace. So go find the one scripture and get understanding. Remember I said, I sang that song, and he walks with me and he talks with me. And there's power in the blood, power, power. They never taught me, what, what does the power in the blood mean? Well, Jesus died on the cross, shed his blood for the forgiveness of your sins. Come on, it's deeper. There's more to it. You see, what we're talking about today is the blood of Jesus. It's the covenant blood of Jesus that gives you access to the Father. Not anybody can walk in before the Father and talk to the Father. Only those who have been washed in the blood. You have been washed in the blood. You have a right. You know, everybody gets stirred up about our constitutional rights, and we should. We have rights. We're Americans. But if you go to a foreign country, you're not in Kansas anymore. They're going to arrest you just because they don't like your looks. You look like an American. Come with us. Put your hands behind your back. But you have rights as a believer that were bought and paid for by the blood of Jesus. And you can stand in that blood and declare the covenant because you're the covenant representative. You're the ambassador God has called to represent him in the earth. God needs representation. He said, yes, you. Jesus came as a man to save men. Why didn't God just do it from heaven? It's deeper. It's covenant. It's blood covenant. It's the covenant of Jesus and God for us. So we have to, re that's renewing your mind. If I'm saying something you haven't heard before, this is called renewing the mind. Changing your thinking. Okay, there's more to it than pie, pie, wonder working pie in the blood of the lamb. What does it mean? It means we have access to the Father because Jesus sacrificed his life. The perfect lamb. And so we have to start renewing our mind. What does covenant mean? What do we have? What are the promises? How are the promises yes and amen to me? Okay, well, how come I don't have the promises? Then I have to renew my mind. I have to get understanding why I don't have these things, and I'm supposed to have them. I heard a story a long, long time ago, and this lady was worked for the Queen of England, and she retired, and they gave her a letter, and uh, she left and went, and she lived in a shack out in the country, and you know, maybe, uh, I don't know if y'all know about some shacks. I mean, you can see the chickens pecking outside through the cracks in the wall. And uh, she was living in an old run-down house. And, and a reporter heard people in the neighborhood said, that lady worked for the queen. So a reporter went and said, did you really work for the queen? And she goes, yes, I did. She goes, that piece of paper, I framed it and put it on my wall. She's in adverse poverty, starving, holes in her clothes. And the reporter walked over to the wall and started reading. You are hereby awarded for all your service to the queen for 40 years. We will give you this house and we'll provide for you all the days of your life. 
and you'll have food, and you'll have vehicles, and you'll have clothing, you'll have everything. She couldn't read. She just thought it was a nice piece of paper and put it on the wall. But she was supposed to be taken care of. They didn't know where she, she had gone, where she went. What? How about, how about the Word? What is it, why, why do we have to renew our mind to understand what God has given us? And what's rightfully ours, it was rightfully hers, and God rightfully wants to take care of us. But we don't renew our mind. We, 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 well, this is the way we've always been. You know, we live up on, we, we live over, in the, over on the hill there, and that's been my grand, grandma's property, and, and we've had that, and, and, and why don't you move to town and get a job? We can't handle the traffic. I said, Whitfield don't have traffic. Go to Dallas. Go to, go to Atlanta. But they're talking about Whitfield traffic too bad. They need their mind renewed. Yeah. But you can get stuck in poverty. You can get stuck in lack. And God wants to take you out. You can get stuck in sickness. God wants to take you out of that. And, but we have to renew our mind. And let me show you a couple of scriptures. In Romans 12, 2, it says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You can be walking in the good will of God, but God wants to get you to the perfect. You can be in the acceptable will of God, but you know what? There's always more. And maybe you have never thought about it like this, but in Ephesians 5, 20, it talks about marriage. Husbands, love your wives. Wives, you know, submit to your husbands and all that good stuff. And you know, women don't want to hear, I ain't submitting to that man. Well, hold on. If he gives his life, like Jesus did, he's worthy of being submitted to. But look what it says right here, that he might sanctify and cleanse her. Now, Jesus stops, and he's comparing a husband and a wife, and he's comparing the body of Christ, you and me, as the bride and him being the husband. And he said, as the husband, Jesus said, as the husband, I'm going to cleanse you with the Water of the washing of the, or washing of the water of the word. The word of God will wash you. The word of God will renew you, but once your mind starts getting renewed, it starts washing you clean and stuff. Old addictions come off. When I started getting in the word, I mean, I was t told the group Thursday night, I said, my, I had two, well, I had a great great grandmother I knew that dipped snuff, two great grandmothers that dipped snuff. All the great uncles was alcoholics on one side, but they're chewing tobacco people over here. And it was tobacco everywhere. And here I am living in the country where it's raised now. But anyway, but, but I, so I started dipping snuff in the fourth grade. Everybody else is. We haven't even, but as I got into the Word, the, the Holy Spirit started dealing with me. Not that I was going to hell for dipping snuff, but God, I knew that God was calling me to be a witness. God wanted to show me how to be delivered of it. God wanted to show me that he could, that he, he, and I wanted to serve him. And I said, I'll give you anything. And I know I'm going to be leading youth. I'm going to be working with kids. I, and I wasn't working with kids and youth, but I knew that was the plan. I knew that God was going to put me in front of people. And a big old fat lip was, that ain't a good witness. Okay? It also shortened your life for whatever reasons too, but I was convicted. You, there's no condemnation. If you you got to ask God. I can't take your beer out of your hand, your cigarette out of your hand. I can't make you chase the Father. But I'm preaching to you and re, hopefully renewing your mind that you'll want to visit with Him. And you'll want to be stirred up this morning. And He'll wash you with that Word and renew you with that Word. And things will fall off you, your bad attitude. I mean, all these things will, will fall off. As you get into the Word, He'll start washing you. And you're like, well, I need to get rid of that. I need to take care of that. I'm insecure in that area. Lord, I need boldness. Help me. The, the Bible said he'll give you boldness. The Bible says you lack wisdom. He'll give you wisdom. I'm going to close with the last funny one. You want to look real smart? You ready? Real smart. Keep your mouth shut. It's a fact. The Bible even teaches that. Yeah, you just... All right, one more story. It was a youth pastor. He dressed up. He had a tie. They was having a meeting about the, a community meeting about all the youth, children and the youth. And he was sitting there and they, and man, he was looking sharp and everybody else was in blue jeans, tennis shoes. 
And they said, we need, a, we need a, somebody to run this committee. And they all looked at him and said, will you lead this committee? It was secular. It wasn't even, you know, church thing. But because he kept his mouth shut and he looked good, he dressed the part, he became over it. And I mean, it grew up and blew up. It was in a big city. But you, you, you know, you got to be led how you dress, what you look like, and, and what you say. Slow to speak. Just, 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 that might be for somebody, but we go. So listen, we're going to close with this. Imagine how your life would change if you start spending time with God every day. Even if you miss it, he's not going to say, well, it's the, you know, like I said earlier, it's the 53rd time this year you've missed it. He's not. He's, he loves spending time with you. And if you start spending time with him, your life will begin to change. Your life will be, be will, the, the old things will become new. And he'll bring new things to your life. He'll start speaking to you and you can hear his voice. And you go, I wonder if that was God. So then he'll confirm it through somebody else. Or you, you'll, you'll see something and go, that's what God's trying to tell me. God wants to speak. So if you're a sheep, Jesus said in John 10, my sheep know my voice. And the voice of a stranger they will not follow. You can expect to hear God's voice. You can hear the Father's voice. Jesus will speak to you. He called Jesus, draws you in to salvation. He introduces you to the Father. And you can have fellowship with the Father, and they send you the Holy Spirit to live on the inside of you, and He will start speaking to you, guiding you. And you have fellowship, and you talk to the Father. Well, I don't quite understand that. And he'll say, I don't care. Just give that one word, and I'll take over. Just be available, and I'll tell you what to do. Can we just say that we're going to spend time with God? Come on, he's the Father. Quit comparing your father to somebody else's father. Maybe you were hurt. Maybe your mother was pitiful. It don't matter. God is God. He's Father. And he wants to spend time with you, and he wants to speak to you. And he'll tell you and show you things to come. You can look at somebody just like Jordan come up and looked at you, and, and you can look at somebody, and God will tell you something about them to encourage them. That's what we're supposed to do. Bye. Hey, look, that's where we're supposed to go. Hear that? Bye. We're supposed to go over there. We hear, and we hear other sheep, and they encourage us, and God encourages us. But you know what? I always like it. It's good to have somebody with some skin on them where they can give you a hug. And that's why we have church, so we can fellowship. I want you to bow your head. Maybe you're here and you don't know Jesus. This is a benefit of knowing Jesus, that God becomes your father. If you have never accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and you say, you know what? I'm, I, I, I think I want to try this. You know, the Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. I'm going to ask you to raise your hand in just a second, but before I do, maybe you're in here and you've, you got saved a long time ago and you've just been running. You're not serving God, but you know what? God still loves you. He's still calling out to you. That's what this message is all about, is you spending time with Him. And He's calling you to spend time with Him. Maybe that's you, but maybe this is you, that you come to church every Sunday. And you know, you just let your, your time with God slip. He's not mad at you. Matter of fact, He says, all I have, I'm with you always, and all I have belongs to you. That is cool. It still belongs to you. You're still mine. So he's drawing us together. I want to ask you, and this is just between you and God, if, if God's pulling you to make a commitment, make that commitment today. If you, you have never accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, will you raise your hand? Say, pray for me. I see that handle. I see your hand. Let's all just pray a, a, a prayer of commitment today. Say this with me. Say, Father, today I'm renewing 
my walk, my fellowship with you. I trust you, Lord. You're with me always. Teach me your voice. Let me hear you like never before. I believe Jesus. He's the good shepherd. He's my Savior. He's my Lord. I trust him. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for listening to the Sermon of the Week. For more information about Legacy Church and other resources, visit us online at LegacyFamily.info.